There is no African religion that says we must worship ancestors. Ancestors are a historical connecting cable to the past. A great Bishop Joshua Mapong, spitting knowledge. Let's meet in the comment section. But history tells us that uh, as Africans, we were pagans. Before Christianity was brought to Africa, we were worshipping uh, demons and witchcraft and all these things. Is that true? All African... When you pick up the book, by the way, there's a chapter I put there for African names of God in the African space. And when you get to that chapter, you discover that African traditional religions are all monotheistic. Unkulu, unkulu. Umvelingangi, Mudimo, Ramasedi, Mwari, Gainyame, Onkopon, all those names. They don't talk of a plural God. When the white man found an African kneeling under a tree in prayer, they said he's worshipping a tree. There's no African religion that teaches Africans to worship their forefathers and their ancestors. Ancestors are a historical connecting cable to the creation that happened before we became. Therefore, I am Joshua, the son of Lazarus. Lazarus, who is the son of Marara. Marara, who is the son of Maponga. Maponga, who is the son of Minyuki. Minyuki, the son of Muchena. Muchena, the son of Nduma. Son of Nokwara. Son of Chapinduka. Son of Mwenem Tapa. Son of Tobera. Son of Murenga. From the great kingdoms of Guru Uswa in Embo. The sons of Nangashe were in Ethiopia now. Who are the sons of Ham in your Bible? The sons of Cush, the sons of Adam, the sons of God. Now, when you understand that our ululation of our African genealogy is not worshipping ancestors, but recognizing those who were here before us, connecting us to the one who made us before we became. Then you say an African worships ancestors. There's no African religion. There's no African spirituality that teaches you to worship your forefathers. It simply says, call on them. And by the way, there's no African prayer that does not end before you say, please tell the one who created you to deal with this problem. Therefore, it's what you call sacred history interpreted in European construct. When an African calls his forefathers, just like a Jew, says God of, Ar God of Isaac, God of Jacob, God of Abraham, and etc., an African, and by the way, white people don't know the Bible. Well, they don't have ancestors, they don't have synonyms, they don't have totems. When they say Jesus of the tribe of Judah, they don't know the other Jesus is Mtaung. So we cannot help them. <laughs> because even the construct of the text itself challenges their culture, which they don't have. When your brother dies, please go and marry the wife. A white man does not know how to do that. But an African is culture. When boys are of a certain age, please go and circumcise them. A white man does not know how to do that. A black man knows how to do that. Now how can you wait for a white man to tell you what is in the text when the culture and the religion of the text is not European? 80% of the Bible is polygamy. The white man does not know that. He comes down with a monogamous concept on the eye end. Then we start teaching, cheating and etc. on the left and create media around that. So let's not waste our time. What we now believe as Christianity in China is European <laughs> culture. Hey, um, tanami, nye My daughter will not leave this house until she's putting on a white dress. Because the mother now thinks that a white wedding is superior to a black wedding or a cultural wedding. So here we are in Senton right now, 300,000 young boys and girls 
sleeping with each other, two, three children later, because they can't afford 250,000 to go and hire Aventura or Avante for a wedding. To do a white wedding. Are we practicing Christianity? Or this religion we have accepted, this Jesus we are talking about and this God we are talking about will not accept a black man until he becomes white first. Then God can deal with him. Because if you bring your traditional drum into the church, Jesus will run through the door. Because he does not understand this. If you come dressed up like a Zulu into a church, the elder will find a tie for you and a jacket so that Jesus does not get traumatized. These are the realities we need to start talking about as Africans. That are we saying what we've accepted as Christianity is Christianity or it is actually European culture? Can you ask me? And I'll tell you that 60 to 80 percent of Christian practices is European culture. A man who gives you herbs to drink is a witch. A man who aborts your wife and takes the fetus to make tablets and give you back to drink is a doctor. And your government says this is a witchcraft act. It's not witchcraft as a noun. It's witchcraft as a question. Witchcraft are you using? Uh, I'm getting nervous because that stick keeps pointing at me and I've got a feeling it, it can end up hitting me if I say the wrong thing. In the book you say the white God does not hear black prayers unless we are presented in a European way. What do you mean? Because we've been praying all our lives. Because the African child is not at liberty to present himself before the white God without changing his culture first. Then we understand that Christianity has to do with the sodomizing of the African culture. Because when an African ap approaches God as an African, Jesus cannot accept them. Therefore, religion is founded on cultural transformation, economic transformation, political transformation, fashion transformation, pharmaceutical transformation, spiritual transformation. Because as an African, God cannot deal with you. If you come out as a, as a Tswana in your Tswana underwear with a stick on your shoulder and you walk up to church, half of the church will run through the door. But they cannot deal with the African until he has been to Edgar's and Markham's and got himself a tie and a jacket to be accepted. When I make those comments, I'm saying, we must be careful that when we buy bread, we don't swallow the plastic also. Eat the content, but the packaging of the gospel by the way, while we are on that, let me be very clear that Christianity is colonialism. Because had the Muslim been here before Christians, ask me what you will have been. Talk to me. Go to Egypt, if you don't know. Go to Kenya, if you don't know. Go to Tanzania, if you don't know. Go to Malawi, if you don't know. The populations are Muslims. Why? Because the colonialists who came had the same complexion of the religion they brought. So don't tell me I'm a Christian. Say I'm a colonized Christian. But that's what it is all about. Had Allah been here and Muhammad before Jesus was, you'll have been saying Allah Logba and equally convinced that there is only one God but Allah. And I love Muslims, by the way. If you believe that when you die, you go to heaven. The Muslim says, can I kill you and we go together? <laughs> then the Christian is always not ready to die. <laughs>